Hello, and welcome to this G1000 VNAV tutorial. We'll be learning about the capabilities the G1000 VNAV mode has in the simulator. Before we get started, it is important to note the limitations the default G1000 has in the simulator. First, the VNAV is not capable of performing a climb. VNAV only calculates the top of descent and the altitude restrictions afterwards. This is great for STARS, or standard terminal arrivals, but doesn't really help you on SIDS, or standard instrument departures. Second, the altitude you put into the first waypoint must be higher than any subsequent waypoint, or the G1000 will ignore that altitude restriction. It makes sense considering VUAV doesn't calculate a climb profile. Third, just because you have everything set just right doesn't mean the autopilot will not put you into a dangerous situation, like an overspeed. All it's going to do is make sure your aircraft descends on the correct vertical path to reach the altitude restrictions. You are still in control of the power. Now, let's jump over to the MFD and talk about our flight plan for today. Selecting the FPL, or Flight Plan, button, we will see we already have a flight plan inserted into the G1000. If you're curious to see how I did this, you can go watch my video on how to flight plan in the G1000. At a cabe, we're going to insert our maximum cruise for this flight, which in this case would be 4,500 feet. And press enter. Then we're going to say at Afton, we're going to have an altitude restriction for 3,500 feet. And pressing enter. By default, if you put an altitude restriction before any other waypoint, it will automatically fill in the waypoints after with the altitude you put into the preceding waypoint. The G1000 will calculate the top of descent and begin descending at that point, somewhere between the two waypoints. Now let's go fly so we can actually demonstrate how this is going to work. As we approach AK, I want to cover one more requirement for VNAV on the G1000. In order for the autopilot to descend at the top of descent, we have to reduce the altitude target to or below the next altitude restriction. In this case, we need to select 3,500 feet. However, to demonstrate how the autopilot will level off at 3,500 feet at Afton, I will set it lower, let's say 2,000 feet. Now we're going to activate VNAV after reaching our cruising altitude. You'll notice VPath is now in white, letting you know it's been armed. As we approach the top of descent, notice we get several magenta indicators. These help demonstrate the autopilot should be aiming for and during descent as well as letting you know VNAV will be taking over with the VPath indicator. As we cross the top of the descent, you can see the aircraft automatically begins pushing the nose over to begin descending. We are responsible for power, so I will pull the power back to maintain the speed during the descent. As we approach 3,500 feet, the autopilot will level the aircraft off, keeping the aircraft from descending any lower than the restriction at Afton. We are responsible for adding power back to maintain speed. Notice how even though my altitude is set to 2,000 feet, the aircraft does not descend below that altitude restriction that we had placed at Afton of 3,500 feet. If we had any waypoint after Afton with a lower altitude restriction, the aircraft would continue descending to the appropriate altitude. That is how you use the VNAV in the G1000 in the flight simulator. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below with any questions you may have or your favorite emoji just for engagement. You can watch the rest of the series as well to become a more knowledgeable virtual pilot. Thank you again, and I'll see you all next time up in the sky.